Tactile paving, also called truncated domes, detectable warnings, tactile ground surface indicators, tactile walking surface indicators, detectable warning surfaces, is a system of textured ground surface indicator found on footpaths, stairs, and train station platforms to assist pedestrians who are visually impaired. Tactile warnings provide a distinctive surface pattern of truncated domes, cones, or bars detectable by long cane or underfoot which are used to alert the visually impaired of approaching streets and hazardous surface or grade changes. There is a disagreement in the design and user community as to whether installing this aid inside buildings may cause a tripping hazard. Originally instituted at pedestrian crossings and other hazardous road situations by Japan, the United Kingdom, Australia and the United States picked up the standard in the early 1990s, after passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA. Canada started incorporating them into transportation first in the 1990s, and then added them to other aspects of the built environment in the early 2000s. History The original tactile paving was developed by Siichi Miyake in 1965. The paving was first introduced in a street in Okayama City, Japan, in 1967. Its use gradually spread in Japan and then around the world. Today yellow tactile pavings are ubiquitous throughout Japan. For aesthetic reasons, for example in front of hotels, the color of the paving can change to reflect the color of the pavement or stone floor. Sometimes the paving contours are produced with steel stripes and dots. The tactile tiles spread rapidly via their adoption at Japan National Railways, later known as Japan Railway. The system was formally named Hazard Guide for the Visually Impaired. In 1985, its modern form can be classified into two types. One has small, round bumps upon the surface of the block, which are felt through a sole. The second type of a block is a directional aid. Long and slender bumps are installed in the surface. However, many types have been manufactured as an experiment and installed. This has resulted in a situation which may be confusing for both the visually impaired and for the elderly. Usually the color of a tile is used to check the proper direction. If the color is not clear, there may be confusion. This has led to standardization of the system throughout Japan. Now, these tiles are spreading throughout the world. There are many tactile tiles installed at subway stations and on sidewalks in Seoul, Korea. The installation situation in Seoul is more challenging than in Japan. Since the surface of various sidewalks in Seoul are not flat, there are many places which do not convey the meaning of a tactile tile. The tactile tiles were adopted at each facility used for the Sydney Olympic Games in Australia and are ubiquitous in Australian public transportation facilities. Such a trend has also started in the UK and the US and throughout the world. Tactile Patterns Blister Tactile These are used for pedestrian crossings. The purpose of the blister surface is to provide a warning to visually impaired people who would otherwise, in the absence of a change of height of 25 mm, find it difficult to differentiate between where the footway ends and the carriageway begins. The surface is therefore an essential safety feature for this group of road users at pedestrian crossing points where the footway is flush to the carriageway to enable wheelchair users to cross unimpeded. The profile of the blister tactile surface consists of rows of flat-topped blisters in a square pattern. Offset Blister Tactile The offset blister tactile is also known as the platform edge, off-street, warning surface. The purpose of this surface is to warn visually impaired people of the edge of all off-street railway platforms. The offset blister tactile surface consists of flat-topped domes, blisters, spaced 66.5 mm apart from the center of one dome to the next one. The tactile paving units can be manufactured in any suitable paving material and may be any color that provides a good contrast with the surrounding area to assist partially sighted people. The current guidance recommends that the offset blister tactile surface be used for all off-street rail platforms including Heavy rail platforms Off-street light rapid transit, LRT, platforms Underground platforms It should not be used for on-street, LRT, platforms Lozenge tactile The lozenge tactile is also known as the platform edge, on-street, 
warning surface. The purpose of the platform edge, on street, warning surface is to warn visually impaired people that they are approaching the edge of an on street light rapid transit, LRT, platform. The profile of the lozenge tactile warning surface comprises rows of 6 mm, plus or minus 0.5 mm, high lozenge shapes, which have rounded edges so as not to cause a trip hazard. The tactile paving units can be manufactured in any suitable paving material. The surface is usually buff colored, but can be any color, other than red that provides a good contrast with the surrounding area to assist partially sighted people. The lozenge tactile paving units should be installed to a depth of 400 mm parallel to the platform edge and a minimum of 500 mm back from the edge. It should never be installed closer to the edge than this because pedestrians may not have sufficient time to stop walking once they have detected the tactile warning surface. Corduroy Hazard Warning Tactile The purpose of the corduroy surface is to warn visually impaired people of the presence of specific hazards, steps, level crossings, or the approach to the on-street light rapid transit, LRT, platforms. It is also used where a footway joins a shared route. It conveys the message hazard, proceed with caution. The profile of the corduroy tactile surface comprises rounded bars running transversely across the direction of pedestrian travel. The bars are 6 mm, plus or minus 0.5, high, 20 mm wide, and spaced 50 mm from the center of one bar to the center of the next. The tactile paving units can be manufactured in any suitable paving material. The surface is usually buff colored, but can be any color, other than red, that provides a good contrast with the surrounding area to assist partially sighted people. The corduroy tactile can be used for any situation, other than pedestrian crossings where visually impaired individuals need to warn of a hazard, such as the top and bottom of stairs, at the foot of a ramp, at level crossing, where people may unintentionally walk directly onto the platform at a railway station, where a footway joins a shared route. Cycleway Tactile The purpose of the tactile surface used in conjunction with a segregated shared cycle track slash footway is to advise visually impaired people of the correct side to enter. The purpose of the central delineator strip is to help visually impaired pedestrians to keep to the pedestrian side. The cycleway tactile comprises a series of continuous raised, flat-topped bars, each 5 mm, plus or minus 0.5 mm, high, 30 mm wide, and spaced 70 mm apart. The central delineator strip should be 12-20 mm high, 150 mm wide with sloping sides and a flat top of 50 mm. The delineator strip should be made of a white material. The tactile surface should be used on any segregated shared route where the pedestrian side is not physically separated from the cyclist side. The tactile surface should be laid at the beginning and end of the shared segregated route at regular intervals along its length and at any junctions with other pedestrians or cyclist routes. Directional or Guidance Tactile The purpose of the guidance path surface is to guide visually impaired people along a route when the traditional cues, such as a property line or curb edge, are not available. It can also be used to guide people around obstacles, for example street furniture in a pedestrianized area. The surface has been designed so that people can be guided along the route either by walking on the tactile surface or by maintaining contact with a long cane. The guidance tactile compromises a series of raised, flat-topped bars running in the direction of pedestrian travel. The bars are 5.5 mm, plus or minus 0.5, high, 35 mm wide spaced 45 mm apart. It is recommended that the guidance path tactile be in a contrasting color to the surrounding area so as to assist partially sighted people. The guidance surface is recommended for use in the following circumstances. Where the traditional guidance given by a standard footway between the property line and carriageway does not exist. Where pedestrians need to be guided around obstacles. Where a number of visually impaired people need to find a specific location and in transport terminals to guide people between facilities. The Role of Color and Contrast The Department of Transport Guidance on the installation and use of tactile paving places a heavy emphasis on the role of contrast. 
The guidance repeatedly states that tactile paving should be chosen to provide strong color contrast with the surrounding paving material as studies have shown that this aids partially sighted individuals. Most tactile paving is available in a range of colors and materials making good color contrast easy to achieve with appropriate choice of tactile paving. There are only two cases where the color of a tactile has a specific meaning. Red is reserved for use with blister tactile to denote a controlled pedestrian crossing. Buff blister tactile are reserved for use at uncontrolled pedestrian crossings. Where installation of tactile paving of a specified color e.g. red blister paving at a controlled crossing, would result in the tactile paving being of a similar color to the surrounding paving a contrast strip of at least 150 mm should be installed to clearly demarcate the tactile area. Detectable Warning Surface Specifications Size ISO slash FDIS 23599 Assistive Products for Blind and Vision Impaired Persons Tactile Walking Surface Indicators SEN slash TS 15209 Tactile Paving Surface Indicators Produced from Concrete, Clay and Stone Location ISO slash FDIS 23599 Assistive Products for Blind and Vision Impaired Persons Tactile Walking Surface Indicators SEN slash TS 15209, Tactile Paving Surface Indicators Produced from Concrete, Clay and Stone Dome Size and Spacing ISO slash FDIS 23599 Assistive Products for Blind and Vision Impaired Persons Tactile Walking Surface Indicators SEN slash TS 15209, Tactile Paving Surface Indicators Produced from Concrete, Clay and Stone Dome Alignment ISO slash FDIS 23599 Assistive Products for Blind and Vision Impaired Persons Tactile Walking Surface Indicators SEN slash TS 15209, Tactile Paving Surface Indicators Produced from Concrete, Clay and Stone Opposing views. Arguments have been made that the money spent on installing tactile pavement could have been much better spent making other improvements that visually impaired people have actually requested, such as faster repairs to broken pavement, and that more thought should have been put into balancing the needs of visually impaired pedestrians and mobility impaired pedestrians, such as wheelchair and cane users who can trip on the bumps. By country. North America. Canada. In Canada detectable warning surfaces have in recent years started to be found in many provincial and municipal building standards, supplements to the building codes. These standards require detectable warning surfaces in prescribed locations, such as on the slopes of pedestrian curb cuts slash curb ramps, exterior and interior ramps, at the top of stairs and on landings, and at the edge of rail platforms. Detectable warning surfaces include both truncated domes and tactile bars. One of the first architectural standards for buildings requiring the use of detectable warning surfaces was the City of London Facility Accessibility Design Standards, FADS. The difference from the American ADA standards is the two different types of tactile surfaces required. At stairs, detectable warning surfaces are required. Long bars that in USA are called directional bars but are placed at perpendicular to the main path of travel, whereas offset truncated dome detectable warning surfaces are used for ramps, elevated platforms, like those found at the edges of boarding platforms in transit facilities, and at other areas where pedestrian ways blend with vehicular ways. Mexico Tijuana uses landmark installations before crosswalks that are similar to those used in California. There are, however, no installations of tactile ground surface indicators. United States In the U.S., tactile warning systems are required by the ADA. The federal government, through studies and guidance provided by advocates and the Access Board, now mandates detectable warnings in prescribed locations, such as on the surface of pedestrian curb cuts and at the edges of rail platforms. Detectable warnings have been required for the edges of rail platforms in the United States since 1991. Detectable warnings for pedestrian curb cuts were suspended for study in 1994, and became officially required in 2001. The ADA Accessibility Guidelines, ADAAG, require these warnings on the surface of curb ramps, which remove a tactile cue otherwise provided by curb faces, 
and at other areas where pedestrian ways blend with vehicular ways. They are also required along the edges of boarding platforms in transit facilities and the perimeter of reflecting pools. The raised pattern of domes also known as truncated domes are the preferred design for detectable warning tiles and pavers. The usage of tactile paving in many circumstances will be required in the United States as part of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Adoption of truncated dome mats has been controversial in some areas including Sacramento, CA. Specifications for current enforceable ADA detectable warnings truncated domes regulation for the general public, is the United States Department of Justice 28 CFR Part 36 revised as of July 1, 1994. Excerpt from ADA 4.3 Accessible Routes, 4.3.6 Surface Textures, 4.5 Ground Floor Surfaces, 4.5.3, Carpet, 4.5.4, Gratings, Textures. To date it appears none of the detectable warnings manufactured, comply with 4.3.6 of the ADA AG. In addition, Testing for being a non-hazardous surface placed in public walkways has not been conducted. In the appendix, some common sense reasons are illustrated about textures and their effects on the mobility impaired, A.4.5 ground and floor surfaces. A.4.5.1 general. People who have difficulty walking or maintaining balance or who use crutches, canes, or walkers, and those with restricted gaits are particularly sensitive to slipping and tripping hazards. For such people, a stable and regular surface is necessary for safe walking, particularly on stairs. Wheelchairs can be propelled most easily on surfaces that are hard, stable, and regular. Soft loose sand or gravel, wet clay, and irregular surfaces such as cobblestones can significantly impede wheelchair movement. 705 below has not been adopted by the DOJ for the general public and is therefore not enforced by the DOJ. Specifications for ADA Detectable Warning Truncated Domes United States Access Board ADA AG specifies 705 Detectable Warnings 705.1 General Detectable Warnings shall consist of a surface of truncated domes and shall comply with 705. 705.1.1 Dome Size Truncated domes in a detectable warning surface shall have a base diameter of 0.9 inch, 23 mm, minimum and 1.4 inch, 36 mm, maximum, a top diameter of 50% of the base diameter minimum to 65% of the base diameter maximum, and a height of 0.2 inch, 5.1 mm. 705.1.2 Dome Spacing Truncated domes in a detectable warning surface shall have a center-to-center -center spacing of 1.6 inches, 41 mm, minimum and 2.4 inches, 61 mm, maximum, and a base-to-base -base spacing of 0.65 inch, 17 mm, minimum, measured between the most adjacent domes on a square grid. 705.1.3 Contrast Detectable warning surfaces shall contrast visually with adjacent walking surfaces either light on dark, or dark on light. Asia China Tactile ground surface indicators are installed broadly in major cities such as Beijing, Shanghai, Dalian, and Guangzhou. They can also be found winding through suburban areas surrounding major cities, the volume of blocks installed is second only to Japan. Both warning and directional blocks are used and installed in a manner roughly the same as in Japan. Some areas have their own rules, however, such as in parts of Guangzhou where no blocks are installed where directional blocks intersect, a location where warning blocks would normally be installed. Block colors include yellow, gray, green, brown and beige. As in Korea, because installation methods are adopted whole cloth from Japan, many of the same errors are found. Maintenance is also inconsistent, here and there one sees broken blocks that have been left unrepaired. Hong Kong In Hong Kong, warning and directional blocks are found at and around rail stations and warning blocks are installed before crosswalks and at medians in the city center. Blocks are yellow, silver, black, grey, green and brown. Installation methods are roughly the same as in Japan. Indonesia 
In Jakarta, Indonesia, warning blocks indicating the entrance to parking lots are installed on the sidewalks in Jakarta's Jalan Tamarin business area, an installation method unique to Indonesia. Blocks of this type are installed at nearly every parking lot entrance, making for a great many installations. Warning blocks are also installed before some crosswalks in the Jalan Tamarin area. No blocks are installed outside this area, however. Blocks are yellow in color. Japan Although the tactile pavings were first installed in Okayama City in 1967 and were widely installed throughout Japan, tactile pavings were not standardized until 2001 by Japanese Industrial Standards JIS. Tactile pavers are installed at almost all curb ramps in Japan. Directional tactile pavers are installed on sidewalk and pedestrian crossings frequently used by visually impaired people such as a route between transit facilities and buildings such as hospitals, school for visually impaired, community center, major shopping centers, government buildings, and so on. Since 1994, Japanese law require buildings exceeding floor area of 2,000 square meters, 22,000 square feet to install and maintain tactile pavings near stairs, ramps, escalators, and major pathway. Schools, hospitals, theaters, arenas, community center, exhibition halls, department stores, hotels, office, multi-dwelling units, or senior homes with floor space less than 2,000 square meters, 22,000 square feet, must spend reasonable effort to install and maintain tactile pavings inside the building, but not required. The original law was replaced by another law in 2006 with wider scope including outdoor areas. Also by law, all transit facilities in Japan must install directional tactile pavers connecting the path from public entrance to the boarding area or manned booth. All stairs, escalators, and ramps must be marked with blister tactile pavers. Airport boarding bridges exempt from installing tactile pavers, given handrail is installed and other technical requirements are met. Boarding areas for passenger ferries are also exempt if the area is exposed to waves and tactile pavers create trip hazard. Malaysia In Kuala Lumpur, blocks are installed mainly at rail, subway, LRT, and monorail stations and the surrounding sidewalks. In some locations warning and directional blocks are installed as in Japan while in other locations directional indicators are carved into the pavement and warning blocks are installed where direction L markers intersect and where pedestrians are to stop. The latter practice is often followed at rail and LRT stations but the two types were found to coexist at one location. Blocks are yellow, silver and grey. Singapore in Singapore, warning and directional blocks are installed primarily around subway stations and in some housing estates. Many crosswalks are also equipped with warning blocks. Installation rules are roughly the same as in Japan. Blocks are silver, yellow, and grey. South Korea In Korea, warning blocks and directional blocks are installed in accordance with Japanese rules in many locations including sidewalks, subway and rail stations and platforms, public facilities, and large shopping centers. The configuration of the blocks, with the exception of some subway stations in Seoul, is the same. Blocks are yellow, silver, brown, white and gray. Because installation methods are adopted whole cloth from Japan, many of the same errors are found. Taiwan Taiwan as in Korea and China in Taiwan warning blocks and directional blocks are installed in accordance with rules nearly identical to those in Japan. Most blocks are yellow, with grey blocks also in use. Tactile ground surface indicators are frequently installed across the entire sloped area leading to a crosswalk, creating an obstacle for wheelchair users and others. In addition, although there are many stepped areas on sidewalks in the city centre, very few are marked with warning blocks. This is dangerous for people with impaired vision and fails to accommodate their needs. Thailand In Bangkok, warning and directional blocks are used on many sidewalks in central Bangkok. Warning blocks are also installed at the top and bottom of stairways at subway and monorail stations. Blocks are not, however, installed at rail stations or rail platforms. Installation rules are roughly the same as in Japan. Blocks are yellow or grey. 
many damaged blocks seem to be left unrepaired. Bangkok is a city with many vendors who set up shop on sidewalks, these frequently end up covering the blocks. India In the metropolitan cities of Mumbai and Delhi, warning and directional blocks, resembling those in Japan, have been installed in sidewalks leading to and inside metro stations. Delhi Metro is the most accessible public transport infrastructure in the country. It has tactile paving from entry to exit. Such tiles can also be located on pavements near shopping plazas, and particularly around the Delhi University campus. These tiles come in yellow. Although, the tiles within the metro stations are continually cared for, the maintenance of those set over the sidewalks is generally neglected. The Jawaharlal Nehru University, Delhi also has tactile paving on its walkways. India has one of the largest population of people with disabilities. Still the development of pedestrian walkways with tactile paving is at infancy in the country. Government of India has launched Accessible India campaign to make the nation's infrastructure more inclusive and accessible on 2015. The upcoming Kachi Metro Rail project in state of Kerala will also have entry to exit tactile paving, in the lines of Delhi Metro. Australasia Australia The Australian Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission Hriuk, released guidelines on access to buildings and services in 2007, under the Disability Discrimination Act 1992. This recommends the use of Australian standard as slash NCS 1428.4-2002 design for access and mobility, tactile indicators. The standard specifies the use of truncated cones, rather than domes, as used in the USA. Hriuk described the use of the standard. In Sydney, blocks are installed at rail, monorail and light rail station platforms, before exterior stairways, before exterior obstacles, at airports and at bus stops. Warning blocks and directional blocks are similar to those used in Japan, and installed in the same way, including at the Opera House and other well-known tourist spots. Unlike many other countries, however, blocks are not installed before crosswalks. As some rail, monorail and light rail stations, directional blocks lead from at or near the ticket gates to the platform. Blocks are yellow, silver, blue, green and grey. Blue blocks are frequently used at rail stations while yellow is often used at monorail and light rail stations. New Zealand As slash NZS 1428.4.1-2009 provides the requirements relating to tactile ground surface indicators in New Zealand. Generally, the standard, as 1428.4.1-2009, makes available the provisions relating to tactile indicators within the built environment, while the New Zealand Transport Agency's RTS-14 guidelines for facilities for blind and vision-impaired pedestrians facilitates the requirements for tactile indicators within the roading environment. Both apply various similar compliance prerequisites to tactile indicators such as visual contrast, slip resistance in wet and dry conditions, the mean coefficient of friction, resistance to impact, shear strength, weathering resistance, and UV stability, wear resistance and general adhesion slash bond strength, particularly when immersed in water. In general, tactile indicators in New Zealand are required to be detectable by tactile means. Have a luminance contrast to the surrounding substrate of not less than 30% across its entire area, if the tactile indicators are the same color as the underlying surface for integrated tactile indicators. Not less than 45% if the tactile indicators are discrete, individually drilled and glued, and not less than 65% for a diameter 25 plus or minus 1 on the raised section for composite construction, made of two materials that are different colors, tactile indicators. Be placed across the direction of Travec to ensure detectability, and have a top surface that doesn't protrude more than 4 to 5 mm above the substrate. Warning tactile indicators in New Zealand are mandatory at pedestrian crosswalks, also called pram ramps or curb crossings in New Zealand, at the approaches to stairways, ramps, escalators, and moving walkways, the approach to railway level crossings, bus hoarding areas, median cut-throughs, 
along the entire length of railway platform edges and before any abrupt changes in grade to the walking surface, 1,8 change with a curb height of more than 70 mm. Warning tactile indicators in New Zealand need to be installed to the full width of the approach to the obstacle slash hazard so as to minimize the risk of a vision impaired person stepping over or through the pad and encountering the obstacle. In any event, the warning tactile indicator pad should be no less than 900 mm wide, except where it is physically impossible. Directional tactile indicators are required to be installed at crosswalks public transport access points and significant public facilities to provide directional guidance for vision-impaired people who have to deviate from the continuous accessible path of travel in order to gain access to the aforementioned. Directional tactile indicators should always point in the directional of travel to achieve this. Europe Belgium In Brussels, blocks are installed before crosswalks, at bus stops and at subway and rail stations and platforms. Most blocks are grey, with yellow, silver and black blocks also used. Brussels has a mix of locations where the blocks, warning and directional, and installation methods are similar to those in Japan and locations where block configuration and installation methods are unique to Belgium. One of the Belgium-specific blocks uses metal discs of roughly 85 mm in diameter and 8 mm in height. In Japan, the prescribed size of warning block protrusions is 22 mm in diameter, plus or minus 1.5 mm, and 5 mm in height, a size designed to promote mobility by the visually impaired without impeding the movement of wheelchair users or elderly pedestrians. Given the large size, height, and slipperiness of the metal discs used in the Belgian blocks, one suspects that they present a significant obstacle for wheelchair users, children, and the elderly. In one part of the city, metal bars are embedded in the road surface where one would expect to find warning blocks, at the top of stairs and escalators, for example. Being only 3 mm in height, these protrusions create no obstacle for wheelchair users or elderly pedestrians but also seem likely to go unnoticed by the visually impaired. In some places, similar metal bars are embedded in the road surface and serve a directional function. Rubber warning blocks are also sometimes installed at bus stops where directional blocks intersect. Brussels, therefore, presents a mix of block types and installation styles that may create confusion for people with impaired vision. France In Paris, warning blocks are installed before crosswalks, at the top and bottom of stairs leading in and out of subway stations and on subway and train platforms. In some areas, Blocks serving a directional function are installed within crosswalks. Most blocks are white but black, grey, and pale yellow are also used. To protect the scenery, subway station signs and other prominent man-made objects are not installed near historical sites such as the Arc de Triomphe, the Paris National Opera, the Louvre, or the Place de la Concorde but tactile ground surface indicators, in colors that stand out, white and yellow are an exception Paris has recently been emphasizing barrier-free accessibility, including such experimental efforts as the uniquely configured blocks installed at the Montparnasse rail station. Germany Most railway stations and tram or bus stops are fitted with lines of tactile paving, similar in layout to those in Japan. Parallel lines indicate the direction of the line, at intersections, the paved lines cross over. Tactile paving at those locations is usually in white or yellow. Some larger cities, such as Leipzig have installed tactile paving throughout their city centers, including Normal. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.